There we go. So, um, <laughs> thank you all for coming to this beautiful show. Greg Goldberg is our artist at the moment. And he's he's um, kindly offered to speak for a few minutes and describe his work too. Thanks, Greg. So this, so he's a, this is uh, my most recent group of paintings called Pentimento Paintings. And I oh, gave them that Pentimento. Okay. Uh, which actually found out is Italian for repentance. Uh, and, uh, but I titled them because I was thinking of Renaissance paintings and the idea that the, uh, the underpainting is, ends up showing through, uh, becomes a part of the actual and the final painting. And uh, so that it's sort of the idea that the process of the painting, the process of making the painting is intrinsic to the final appearance of the work. And so there's kind of very subtle color shifts, like how this, this green here shifts when it's on the gray to the yellow, and that sort of there's moments like that that are throughout the painting. And there's lots of earlier layers which are either visible adjacent or sort of subtly visible underneath and affecting the color that goes over. And sort of that's, you know, hence the, hence the title. Um, and I sort of generally work um, around the perimeter and then sort of develop these, you know, stacks um, and try to figure out how to keep what, you know, all these different colors ultimately uh, in kind of a very dynamic uh, balance, uh, you know, where it's lyrical but structured at the same time. That's, uh, and you know, I'm also, being in Cornwall, I work in natural light, and you know, there's just a lot of looking outside and how the kind of colors shift depending, um, you know, on the seasons, you know, when sort of things are much more, uh, you know, kind of muted in the winter, and then, you know, you have spring, and you start to get all sorts of beautiful yellows and greens, and so that sort of the natural colors also work their way into the paintings, and then there's all, there's also just sort of the kind of pure, I don't know, you know, colors that I think are really just kind of like painted colors, like some of these violets, but I don't know, maybe see some of that stuff in flowers now. So anyway, that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> you take questions. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> now you can say pass. Yeah. But, um, can you describe your, you have a color process, a process of understanding color while you're working? Well, of swatches? I, I, and yeah, stuff. I mean, there, well, so, like, there's, there's pigments that I use at the beginning, the middle, and the end, and that has a lot to do just with, in terms of the drying time. You know, like, there's, I use the faster, faster drying pigments, and generally sort of, yeah, faster drying pigments at the beginning, and then sort of the pigments which dry a little more slowly in the middle, and then the uh, pigments which dry even more slowly in the later layers. And then that way, you know, the, uh, you know, the paint film retains its integrity. You know, I don't have cracking or any sort of, you know, physical, physical issues in the painting. It also, you know, allows the, you know, the color to, you know, retain a certain, you know, they're not like super saturated, but they're sort of, you know, they're, they're matte but clear, um, and they're kind of saturated enough, which is the sort of finish that I'm that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. So, and is the color? Are you working out the color on the painting? Yes, Every, everything is. Sure. Not, not, not nothing is, is is planned. They're just they're they're very, you know. I mean, I sit down and I, you know, once they've sort of started to develop, I kind of figure out like, okay, you know, this color is gonna is gonna go over this. Um, you know, but but there's there's a, you know certain amount of allowance. It's you know I never you know there's sort of what you have in your mind that you think is going to work in an area, and then I end up kind of working that color in that area. You know, first I use a wet brush, and then I use a dry brush. Um, you know, to sort of you know remove some of the color so that what's underneath um, can you know can come through. Uh, and I, so I sort of use that to affect the density. Of, of the individual colors 
No. So you don't paint the whole thing in color to begin with? No, no, no. So, so this, once you get the, the drawing, in other words, the, the figures the way you want them, it's just those that are it's a layering of, of different colors on top of the water. Right, but the, but the drawing isn't, isn't a fixed drawing. It's, okay. you know, it's the, the drawing is always changing and the color is, 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 is changing as well. Like this might have been, you know, a much larger mass at one point and then it sort of, you know, kept on. You know, like you, know, you can sort of see it here with how you have the yellow and then there's the green over the yellow. Um, so sort of as one thing changes, it ends up affecting what's around it. Why do you choose one over the other? What are you looking for when you're layering the colors? Um, well, I mean, a lot of it has to do with, um, I don't know, you just kind of, you know, usually feeling that, uh, you know, a certain color needs to go in a certain place, um, but also that there's certain colors that, that work well you know, over each other and certain colors which aren't, you know, agreeable. Um, you know, like if I put a, a blue over like a really dark color, it's not going to really appear as being a, a blue ultimately. It could just, it could just read as being like really, really, I mean like here you can like, so this is like the same ultramarine as this, as this, as the, you know, as the, it's the, the, the blue ends up sort of shifting depending on what it's been put over. Um, so a lot of it is about um, you know, you know, clarity, um, and but also just sort of where it, it how you know, like if is it going to work as a transition? So thinking about like this blue to this gray to this purple to this subtle green, and that's also sort of like the little areas that I'm I'm leaving. It allows for sort of slower and more kind of subtle transitions within the painting, um, and and also just sort of allowing, you know, a little bit of what's underneath to, you know, to show through. Um, so. Any cultural influences? Uh, I, I, I like uh, Italian Mannerist painting. Uh, I like Italian Renaissance painting. I like a lot of Dutch painting. Um, I particularly like Hans Memling, uh, Jan van Eyck. Um, so, I'd say. I mean, in terms of art historical kind of precedence. Yeah. What about the idea of time in the paintings? Why do they take so long? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just because I'm slow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they just no because because they just it, it I don't know. It just takes a long to figure out the right uh, you know the right balance. Um, just requires a lot of uh, okay. a lot of patience. Um, so, how many layers are there? Uh, they have they, well. So usually they're around 23, 24 layers, and sort of each layer would be would usually have three three colors. So it's, there's yeah, there's a lot of colors. Hey, Greg, I've always wondered when artists decide that their work is done. What do you do? Do you stand back and go? You know, um, usually it's I, I can't I can't add anything else. It feels like it's balanced, like all the transitions work. And I mean, generally, if if each individual transition works and the whole feels balanced, then I know that the painting is 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 finished. Uh, yeah, it's sort of. Would you ever look at it like tonight? Would you ever look at it and say? No, no, I mean, I, I usually... When it's done, it's done. Yeah, I mean, like, I, you know, sometimes, like, I, it might, you know, like, I might think it's finished, and then, like, two weeks later in the studio, there's, like, a part that's, like, really bothering me, and then I have to, you know, kind of go and, you know, tweak it a little bit. Um, but, I mean, usually, I mean, when they're done, they're done. <laughs> so, Thank yeah. You. Can you talk about the whole fecal colors? <laughs> what are you, they're just, they're <laughs> well, and I, I, I like, this is, 
Katya, Katya is actually Beyond. quoting. This is this is this is Bill Rubin talking about yeah. Clifford Still. So she's she's kind of being she's kind of being funny. Bill Rubin is was the former director of the Museum of Modern Art, and that's I don't, anyone's if you're familiar with Clifford Still's paintings, he uses a lot of quote unquote fecal colors. Uh, but you know, I just I, I like I like to use a lot of these earth colors. You know, as it's a it's essentially it's a counterpoint. To, to the much sort of brighter and more, you know, kind of intense uh, colors, you know, like the, like the yellows and like the violets, and it just, it, 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 you know, if they were all like super bright, you know, punchy colors, there wouldn't be any kind of tension in the paintings. So it allows for a certain kind of counterpoint. Are the paintings in the other room painted before? Yes, those are these, much, These yeah. are the most recent? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, those, those paintings were, Probably about four, around you know, three, four years ago. So, yeah, like 2016, 2017. Yeah. Hi, Todd. Oh, nice to see you. Thanks. Has your work changed since moving full time to Cornwall? Would you say has been something maybe palette or composition or anything now that you have more time here in nature more than being in the city in Chelsea? Um. Well, you know, I think when I initially started these, I guess I was. I was thinking we uh, look out on Coltsfoot Mountain, so like I'm always looking at this ridge line, uh, and so I mean I think that the kind of you know this you know the stacks and this I mean, you know they're not it's not a horizon but I mean I, you know I, I guess that that sort of you know is in some way you know kind of inform the work. I mean originally when I was thinking of them I kind of thought of them as being horizons and kind of related to the mountain. Um, and I mean, and definitely in terms of just seeing like, like I, like I said, with the colors in nature, you know, as the seasons change, um, I mean, it definitely, I mean, these are, you know, colors that you, you know, see at different times of the year here. So, but I mean, there's, they're also, they're just, you know, they're earth pigments, so. Yeah. That's a nicer word than fecal. <laughs> 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 At home, I can't ask questions. Uh, Katya's mother. Mm -hmm. But since you were dating Katya, then married, I observed the evol evolving um, mastery. And the paintings that are in the World Trade Center, they're huge. And that was the first work that you did in Cornwall. Right. But I'm just curious how the color uh, obtains the shape. Because the shapes are so different now. Right. Now they are more actually um, visible, more shapely. So how? So that's, I can't so this it's, it's usually it's, it's it's with the so you know generally with, with these ones I actually I used I guess what you would call you know fine art brushes um, so there's like there's flats there's brights there's filberts so there's, there's kind of smaller brushes of all different shapes and kind of sizes and you can kind of manipulate the paint but I ended up kind of going back to just using I have these the kind of like high end house painter brushes. Which essentially are just you know they're like you know, they have the handle and I mean it looks like a house painter brush but they they come in different widths and that sort of ultimate depending on the size it kind of like I end up thinking that like this color needs to sort of almost you know needs to be kind of like this wide occupied just sort of like this much territory and then I just I kind of use that that you know that brush and sometimes you know I can I'll put like one brush stroke on top of the other you know. So the it could be like double wide, if that makes sense. Uh, but it's but it's generally the the you know the brush that I'm using uh, ultimately ends up dictating the the, the the color mass. So the brush goes first, but I was more interested how well, it is in your head, how the color uh, dictates the form. I, I you know I don't know. Um, I mean, it, it just, it's, it's really that, that like, you know, the, the, the color needs to be like a certain scale, I mean, that, and, and occupy a certain amount of territory.
territory, and, it, and I sort of end up choosing the brush, you know, based on, you know, based on that. Um, so, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I love the little rectangles and the way you fuse them differently in the different canvases, and they all work so well. But that's new, isn't it? Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was also that was a function of using the, you know, the fine art brushes because they're much they're much smaller and it's easier to manipulate, you know, the paint than with the um, than, than, than than with the house than with the house painter brushes. So um, that kind of allowed me. I, I, could, I could just I could be more precise, um, you know, and kind of do these you know very kind of little you know, little marks, um, which are just much more kind of, you know, the house painter brushes, it gets a more kind of, somewhat more blunt instrument, but allows for these kind of really nice, sweeping gestures. Um, you know, and there's a certain, you know, and the brushes, they just, they also feel different because they take a different load of, you know, load of paint. Um, so. But the juxtaposition is what's so interesting. Right. Yeah, it was it was challenging, kind of figuring out how you get the, the more. I mean, you know, those are sort of like the more kind of kind of staccato, you know, kind of slower. It has a very different kind of, you know, it doesn't move in the it, it move in the same way that the gestures do. Um, but it, it was interesting figuring out how you get them all to sort of coalesce into a whole. What kind of frame would you suggest? Depending. <laughs> Personally, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't suggest fr frames because um, I, I don't know. I, I like the kind of just the integrity of the, of the object. But when they have been framed, you know, they look really nice. And uh, usually, it's like a, it's a white floated frame, so there's you know no glass, and you know with I don't you know just a certain you know so it'd be like a white backing with a white with a white frame around it. You know, so it's it's still you know you can see the edges and, and, and the painting retains its integrity as an object and, and so the frame doesn't kind of become as much you know uh, another kind of visual element in the painting. That's that makes sense. Do you title your work? Uh, yeah, just well, I mean, yes, with, with the there's. Panamento painting one, two, three, four, okay. five. <laughs> <laughs> so you tell your series. Yes, exactly. Yes, okay. <laughs> but then for a number of years, you would title them by the dates yeah, when I you used started. to title them by the dates, but it's uh, not, uh, you know, it, it, at this point it's more the, yeah, it's, it's really the group. So. But if you think about this time, in a way, I think it's very interesting that your work, because it does take so long. That in a way it does capture this period of time. Right. And no. How long is long? So I mean, like some of them. I mean, it'll all work on them over a period of like eleven, you know, ten, eleven months. So, but there's also, you know, there's there's two children, there's a dog, <laughs> so there's 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 interruptions. <laughs> start all of them at the same time? Pretty pretty much. I mean usually within like kind of like a one, two month span. Um, so there's not there's not almost any repetitions. I find it very interesting how you choose how I guess right. one becomes what it becomes very unaffected by the others. Right. Yeah, I mean they like these two were sort of like a pairing. They have a slightly different structure than these two. And then that one, there's another companion piece which is in, in the show. But I they um yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's it, they, they, they they'll sort of end at different at different points. Like I think this one actually went on the, the longest. Like this one maybe has one more layer than that one. This one ended maybe like two or three layers before the others. But I mean, ultimately, it's like I'm using sort of the same pigments in each one, but depending on how they're you know how they're mixed, you know, you can have like you know a color that's it's green, but it could also be like really so like like much more red, depending on how you end up mixing the pigments together. Um, and that's I mean part of what's interesting about you know making them is having 
that that sort of uh, consistency of, of pigments and you know structure, but each painting looks so different depending on you know how you're mixing the colors and then what colors are next to each other, what colors are over each other. So it kind of create you know allows for very kind of open ended. It's like a, I mean, a process of discovery. So. Great. Over there. I'm just going to say, I, I really appreciate, uh, maybe I'm just projecting, but it, I see a timelessness in them that really, I, I, obviously, you've mentioned the Dutch painters, a lot of Venice, maybe the Southwest. Um, uh, the colors are, there's a timelessness to it, and the way you stack them, the subject matter, I love the blue hugging the, the, the centers of these things. Um, it's, it's, it's almost, almost figure almost here. <laughs> but um, I just, I think you really um, achieved a, a jubilance or two uh, with the color that is extraordinary. So I just want to say that. I appreciate that yeah. very much. So I think everybody's really enjoyed this book. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I think maybe we should let everyone move on and people can continue talking to the artist. As well as And that's it. And that's it from the Cornwall Library. Very cool.